Hello guys, so I just want to do a quick update on the Honda S2000 um, Things that I have done this whole week uh, If you watched my previous video, you'll probably uh, know all the stuff that I've been doing this whole week um, Well, i basically done with most of, the, most of the stuff already So I just want to quickly talk about it, like well, some of the stuff that I have done and some of the safety tip and um, some of any recommendation that I could give you guys if you guys going to do any of these um, things. Okay guys, so first of all, um, this whole week I've been doing uh, basic general maintenance stuff like uh, oil change, um, transmission fluid change, and differential um, oil change. Um, of course, in order to do all these three um, fluid change, you basically need to have to jack up your car. So, um, first recommendation, obviously you have to be in the flat surface. Obviously my parents house right here is kind of like a little bit slanted. If you can see it's sort of like slanted down, which is not that safe. But what I did was uh, for the lower jack, I had to raise it up uh, one knot higher than the front to balance off the height issues. Um, but still, safety um, reason, you should always do it in the flat surface area. Um, second thing is that for Honda S2000, which um, I did if you watched my previous video uh, with the, I don't know, the, I, don't, I, I can't remember, how, like maybe four or five video um, ahead of this one. Um, I actually described about certain jacking point. So for the back, you could jack out from the rear differential from the front is the near the engine mount, the front. I don't know what you call it, but engine suffering or something like that in the front. But anyway, you could watch the video. I, I actually show you guys. Um, another problem that I have with jacking up this car is obviously the car is kind of low, so I had to put like these wooden blocks on the bottom just to have, just to able to fit the the jack. So though the jack that I got is right there. That's actually from Harbor Freight. It's a low profile jack. Even though it's low profile, I was having a hard time getting under, getting into the car. And so I, the only way I was able to do is have the car drive up to a, a cement block or like a, a one of these uh, wooden um, stick thing, so that to raise the height a little bit, so the jack could fit underneath. So yeah, and uh, quickly talk about how I did it. So obviously the car is on the thing. Uh, the wooden block. I actually jacked the front up first and then after that I did the back and when I jack up the front I didn't even have you know how the jack point is the jack itself is actually made of metal So metal to metal I didn't want it to scrape or anything like that So I put like a like a paper newspaper or something like that um, Even I put paper on the on the rounding when you jack up the car um, I think I think I use a yellow book. So yeah I use a yellow book and then so when I jack there I, I don't scrape the rear differential or anything like that. So that's one thing I did. So that actually took me a while just to jack up the car. Um, so after I jacked up the car, um, oil change is pretty straightforward. Um, you basically open up the the filter where the engine's at, you know, open up so that I get the gravity, the pressure thing going in. And then you loose up the bottom so that it'll drain faster. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was seven, 17 millimeter for the drain bolt. Um, originally, I have a Fumoto, um, Fumoto um, drain valve. But apparently, it didn't fit. Uh, it's not the thread that doesn't fit. It's because it was the the Fumoto drain valve itself. It was hitting the, the oil pan. Um, where the where the corner is, but anyway, it doesn't fit. So I, I probably have to modify that. So that's probably going to be a another video that I'll probably show you guys how I'm going to do that. Um, so yeah, so oil change is pretty straightforward. Um, one recommendation I'll probably tell you guys is that when you do the um, oil filter, when you put on the oil filter, make sure you um, loop up the new oil filter a little bit so that. The rubber is not really dry, so that um, when you warm up the car, um, that thing doesn't crack or get stuck on it. So it's always put uh, like a, a little bit of loop 
on top of the new oil filter before you screw it on um, that's probably the only tip I could give you guys and then for the oil I usually go for the manufacturer so look at your service note uh, service manual and stuff like that and pull based on whatever the amount capacity that is required um, if you guys want to check out where the jacking point is at, you could watch those video I actually show you guys detail how where I place jack because I watched my few other video before and it was kind of confusing they basically talk about it but they don't really show it but I actually um, put the video pretty close up so you could see it so anyway transmission fluid uh, you need one of these pump. So if you watch my video, you need one of these uh, quart pump to pump it up. So obviously, um, open up the the filter bolt. After you open up the filter bolt, then you open up the drain bolt. Uh, never try to open up the drain bolt and then try to fill out the filter bolt. The the reason why is that sometimes some people have the the filter bolt really tight. And especially you work, you work at home when the car is low like that and you'll be under the car sometimes you don't get enough uh how should i say strength or energy or lever to loose up the bolt so my recommendation is always open up the filter bolt because uh, sometimes if you open up the drain bolt and you drain all the oil out and then when you try to open up the filter bolt but the filter bolt was so tight on that you can't even open it and you know your wrench or your two that you have you know so little space that you have on the ground you don't get enough uh, leverage and you you basically not able to open it and that's not a good thing so i mean you can't just like sit there and hope that someone come helping you you know you're not in a shop or anything like that and the transmission doesn't have any oil in so you can't really drive it you know to a shop or anything like that so always make sure you open the field bolt first and then open up the drain bolt it's a good thing and at the same time it'll drain faster because uh more air more oxygen in um gravity so it'll it'll uh, push it down faster anyway that's the one thing same thing for the rear differential um open up the field bolt and then open up the drain bolt um one thing about all these um thing is that don't ever over tighten them because uh, especially the oil pan because those things are not made of iron it's, i think it's like aluminum casting or something like that so you don't want to over tighten because uh last thing you want is for any thread to be over tight or break one of the bolts or stuff like that and so yeah that's that's just definitely one thing and another thing that i did was uh because i don't have a torque wrench um let me go under the car really quick so because i don't have one of the torque wrench so i can't really know what to torque it at like how many pounds so uh, the the tip that i did was uh, i i grab a white out and i kind of white out the car because originally my car doesn't well my car doesn't leak so so obviously the bolt is in the right amount of torque so in order to go back to the same spec when you open it um you just grab a one of the white out and just highlight them and then you basically know like just twist it back to the original spot and that's about it that's the way how i did it so anyway um um so yeah i'm gonna go quickly under the cars another thing that i did was uh i actually uh what you call it i actually undercoat the car so let me I don't know if you watch my previous video you'll probably see the before and after video so right now I'm basically showing you the after video because the car itself is done so as you see all these I totally undercoat these these are the I don't know what you call it, the flame right here I did not undercoat the exhaust I under oh, let me try and get away um, so yeah quickly show you guys these are the white out I did. This is the rear differential. So I use the white out and I basically twist it back to the original spec. Um, I don't have a torque wrench, so I'm guessing the original is this spec. Um, so originally it wasn't black, so obviously I undercoat the whole car. If you could see, undercoat the whole car. So that took me a, a long time. Um, I also undercoat a little bit of uh, oil um, gas link tank, gas tank a little bit of that and then uh, I I wasn't able to spray the inside so this still is the original color the silver but all these are undercoat uh, 
you, you shouldn't undercoat any moving part so drive shafts don't undercoat that um, heat shield I undercoat that I didn't undercoat underneath the below the drive shaft because you know I can't really spray it in there there's not enough space so I just undercoat the side wall the side of the wall but not who is kind of sticky right now when I try to touch it I'll try not to touch it because these are pretty sticky anyway so yeah undercoat this whole thing I left this part blank um yeah so undercoat this I did not undercoat these um these tubing I I'm not sure where is it probably like braking line or or gasoline line I'm not sure what these but anyway I left it empty so below that underneath that is still the original it's still like a metal silver metal like look like brand new so anyway as you see I undercoat a lot of them so it's not really smooth I just kind of spray it. it took me a long time it's really dirty job guys highly I don't know probably not recommended but it's very dirty job um, yep so everything's clean this is the part what I was talking about where you jack up the front to jack the whole car up from the front uh, this is the engine drain bolt right here uh, I kind of undercoat a little bit of this uh, I didn't undercoat the whole thing I put a uh, trash bag over the transmission just to hide everything uh, I also put a trash bag over the exhaust so that it doesn't um, spray the exhaust uh, I tried my best but it took me a long time so on like a half day or all day type of thing well it took me two days to spray paint to undercoat the whole bottom thing so it's uh, quite a while and so yeah let's co quickly show you guys some picture and this is the differential this is where I jack from um, as you see um, some some metal is kind of chip off because the first time I jacked it up, I used the metal to metal, and then after that, I kind of learned about it. And then next time, I sort of just put a new paper with something in between the jack um, lift, and then kept it pretty good condition. So yeah, and then let me quickly come back out. And yep, that's that's basically the undercar. Um, another thing that I want to quickly talk about is that um, when I change the motor oil, um, transmission oil, and then with differential oil. I also mix the chemical with the AT205 weed sealer. Um, it's supposed to help with the rubber stuff, rubber seal, even though my car doesn't leak. But they say that when car get old, when, when plastic get old, it starts to get dry and then um, maybe it might start cracking with stuff like that. So AT205 actually lubricate, or it actually, uh, how do you call it? Um, refresh the rubber, basically give it a nice finishing bring the rubber back to its original elastic elasticity type of thing so anyway um i saw on one of the youtube guy they say that they spray on the um suspension and all these rubber stuff so that it stops squeaking so i did that too i spray some of it on the the suspension all these rubber part and everything underneath the car i actually spray a little bit of at205 anything that is rubber I spray AT205 and then I also pour a little bit in the rear differential transmission and engine just to um, keep it in um, man so much scratch but anyway so that's that um, now another update is the front lip spoiler uh, with diffuser that I installed this is from um, top one that I installed it took me a few hours I had to take out this um, this lip, this front OEM lip. Um, I did a pretty bad job on these uh, rubber seal. I really don't care. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't really care. But overall, it stays on on there pretty good. So it's, it stays on there pretty good. Um, I don't know. So the car right now is not sitting on the floor, so I'm not really sure is it even surface level. It sort of looked like it's tilting up a little bit. Um, I just had to loose up the bolt so that this thing could adjust, could come down a little bit. Um, right now, I'm kind of pretty tight on the bolt. I didn't want it to fall off, but yeah, it's pretty firm and sturdy on it. It's not going to come off or anything like that. Uh, so, if you want to know how to install it, watch my other video and then 
kind of quickly talk about how to install it but overall it's pretty good um, I didn't bolt the this one I left it out because um, it doesn't really fit with the the bump one um, yeah they, they don't come with the instructions so the front is pretty easy to install the back is the tough part um, I tried showing you guys how to install it but it was pretty tough so I'm, I'm just gonna quickly go do it uh, because the other the other day when I record the video it was kind of dark and you can't really see it uh, okay so update on the on the top this is the same brand uh, top one with diffuser for Honda S2000 first of all you come with the tooth hinge and those hinge are to um, I don't know if you can see it me okay. oh there we go so do you see this piece of metal right here it came with the manufacturer so this supposed to screw onto the rear uh, sway bar this where I pointing out right here that's where sway bar so that supposed to be screws onto the second bolt on the bottom of it so you screw that on first but don't screw it really tight though keep it loose screw this side too so both sides one here and one the other side after you screw that on keeping it loose um, so the diffuser itself is kind of heavy it's not really light so what I did was I pull it I got under the car and I push it up and I uh, let me show you guys I quickly screw you see those two bolts I screw it on but I keep it loose um, both sides this side and the other side as well I keep it loose so that um, the diffuser itself is being held by the hinges while I using the jack um, those that jack right there um, I use the jack to uh, jack up the back the back side of it so this back side is being jacked up by the also I put a newspaper in between but anyway so I jack the back up while I'm holding the front and screw on the front and when I was after I screw on the front the diffuser itself is being held on to the, by the front but I kept I but one thing is that you have to keep it loose though so you don't tie everything up so after the front is being held by the the what you call the the hinge or the L shape um, bracket uh, you come to the back and this thing was being basically hold on by the jack you could actually let go of the jack and then there should be two um, two bolt right here it's actually go directly to your rear bumper and the rear bumper is actually has one of these clip so these clip actually um, it, it actually attach right here right underneath your bumper this should be two of them one here and one on the other side so you remove the two clip and then use the use the screws that they, they came with it um, if you can see it, use the screws that it came with it and then go on to it it doesn't come with the instructions so um, these two screws that come with it is pretty long it's the it's about I don't know how long but it's the only two long screws that they come with it all the rest is the same size after you screw these two on um, you might have to adjust it you might have to push it forward left and right just to align these two screws that's why I told you guys to keep it loose in the front so after you're able to align it and then screw these two on uh, tight <laughs> After you screw on these two, um, yeah, you just screw it on tight. After you finish these two really tight, then you could go to the front and then tight those four up. Even with the L bracket to your sway bar, you could screw it on really tight after that. After that's done, the last thing you need to do is this part. Um, this is actually two piece. Uh, one, this thing and this thing. So this thing, basically, you have to drill a hole onto your bumper. And that was pretty tough for me. Hold on, let me quick, quick grab a seat. Um, yeah, so it was pretty hard on me. So the way I did it was I first um, screw this one onto the with diffuser first. So as you could see, I screw these on first. After that, this hole, the hole itself is pre-drilled already on this thing. So what I did was I grab, use the white out again, and then while I'm warm my hand, I'm pushing it up. While my other hand, I went underneath the the hole. And then do a white out so I so you could see it has these white stuff these are white out that I highlight on top of the rear bumper and after that's done I basically remove all these three bolt again we move that and then you know the rear bumper has a white out on it so I basically drill the hole based on the white out and that's about it after the, after that is done 
I installed the top first, the top piece onto the rear bumper. And then after that, I installed the diffuser onto this. Um, pretty much straightforward. Um, yeah, that the hole itself is pretty hard to um, to align, to mark. So that took me a while. And then the another thing that took me a while is these two screws, these two studs that that I was talking about where the rear diffuser attached to the rear bumper because your hand is kind of hard to go inside and then go to the back of it um, just to tie it up. So th these two um, took me a while and then these drill took me a while. Another thing about this uh, rear diffuser is that all, everything came with um, pre-drill except for this one is also pre-drilled but the thing is that this hole it didn't align so it's probably manufactured uh, defect or something like that so all everything that it came with it even the front lip the rear diffuser and everything uh, front um, lip spoiler i mean and then the rear diffuser everything come with pre-drill even this one too but except for this one this thing itself there should be a hole underneath it didn't align so i had to drill a hole on this one um just to align with the hole I don't know if you could see it, but you probably can't see it right now. Yeah, I had to draw this one. But anyway, um, that's about it. So I'm basically going to lower the car right now, basically done. Um, you know, today I was thinking about I might do a video on uh, spray painting my caliber, stock caliber. And then I also had to do a center cap design, a custom center cap design. So this will be like a, in the future video, I'll probably do a, a center cap design and then spray paint the caliper but these two are not really in a rush or anything like that so anyway i think that's probably the all the update on the car um yeah i might have to adjust the front lip itself um i'm going to lower it first right now and see how it is okay, anyway that's about it if you have any question about any of the maintenance or fluid change or stuff like that with the weird diffuser uh, i'll try to answer the question but you know i'm not really like a mechanic and windy like that who knows a lot but i'll try my best to answer will give you much suggestion as possible okay guys i took it out for a test drive um drives fine same thing not much change i felt like my exhaust got a lot louder but other than that, you know, it wasn't grinding or it wasn't hitting the floor or anything. So perfect amount of clearance. I haven't go over any bumps yet. So this is what it looked like when the car is on the ground lower. Well, I mean not lower, but on the ground itself. So also I noticed something is that I, like I mentioned, I use the AT205 wheel seal inside my engine um for some reason it's giving some kind of funny smell like a smoke when i open the engine cap so i'm not sure is that supposed to be normal um but i hope so anyway um yeah i'm going to do a little bit more research about that but overall cause one's fine it's just a uh, white smoke maybe i need to like drive like for a few more miles until the, not the AT205 we sell workers thing or whatever. But anyway, thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Bye.